Welcome to 38th lecture of video course on Travelogy. Topic of the present lecture is surface fatigue of spur gears. Different words are involved the surface, fatigue and spur gears. Spur gears have been already described in detail in previous three lectures. Fatigue is a failure where the repeated loading happens or occurs on the component surface and we are talking about the surface fatigue which is more pertinent to the tribology. Bending fatigue is more on mechanical side where the bulk properties are used while in surface fatigue we use only the surface properties we do not use the bulk properties. So, let us start this lecture uh, on uh, surface fatigue. We demonstrate that as the surface fatigue in this case uh, we are treating as a failure phenomenon or failure, failure mechanism. There are uh, two most common failure mechanisms we say the root cracking that is a bending fatigue it happens due to the tensile force tensile stresses. The other one is a flank pitting that is a surface fatigue happens because of the surface or is a because of the compressor loading axis or compressible loading. So, there is a different phenomenon there is a different mechanism again root bending may be a spontaneous phenomena when the crack is developed and propagated while well, surface fatigue is a slow process it gives enough time to replace the gear component or the gear part. However, we use the word the flank over here I have described in previous lecture what is the meaning of flank but let me repeat it. See when uh, we are thinking about the invalid profile in invalid profile there will be a hypothetical circle a construction circle known as a pitch circle above the pitch circle whatever the material for the gear occurs that is known as a face and this is a top line. So, this portion will be known face where the initially engagement of gear happens while this portion below the pitch circle, but above the base circle known this portion will be known as a flank and what we are discussing over here is a flank pitting most dominating feature. It does not happen exactly on the pitch circle, but just below the pitch circle where the sliding is also there very high load is also there and they combine to create small pits small dimples on the gear tooth and those dimples create irregularity in the surface cause some sort of vibration some noise. However, the first one is a root uh, cracking or banding it happens obviously that in both the cases because we are using the word of fatigue it happens because of the loading and unloading of gear tooth. If I develop the gear tooth surface and uh, maybe say whole pitch circle diameter and uh, on that number of teeth and show only a portion of that what do you say that in one cycle there may be a 24 teeth. So, I can develop a 24 different domains and out of 24 domains only one domain will be there where gear tooth is going to get loaded that is over here say the load initially is 0 it raises to the maximum value and gradually comes back to the 0 value initially gradually and then spontaneously it comes to the 0 value or in other word this gear tooth is going to be subjected to load 0 initially then it to the maximum value w max then again back to the 0 that is a what we say the compressor loading and fluctuating compressive loading it is going to get subjective. However, because of the this loading what is going to happen there will be some component and that is going to create some sort of tensile stress at the root that is going to cause the bending fatigue in other words bending fatigue happens because of the tension because of the tensile stresses while surface fatigue whether there will be direct load on this there will not be movement there will not be 
uh, moment arm for that and that happens because of that there is a compressive or excess of normal force that causes a surface fatigue. Of course, so when we are talking about only the force it is not appropriate because uh, fatigue happens because of the material properties also. It is a subject to the material property, subjected to the geometry and subject to the load. So, alone load will not be able to find or uh, uh, estimate the surface fatigue. We require other parameters to estimate the surface fatigue value. We can say the fatigue is a fluctuating bending stresses or it causes by fluctuating bending stresses at the root of the tooth this is a tensile stress. To keep this safe, get to the safe without any crack generation at the root, what we need to do keep the stress state within the modified Goodman line. It is very popular um, uh, failure criteria line when we say that we need to keep stresses within Goodman line criteria or modified Goodman criteria where the yielding as well as endurance both have been accounted. We are not going to discuss this in uh, our course on the travelogy because it does not pertain or this topic it does not belong to the travelogy. We will be discussing only surface fatigue value. We already discussed in previous lecture on scuffing which is pertinent to travelogy course. Now, we are going to discuss about the surface fatigue. So, this is the same we are uh, talking about the values and this is a typical picture of surface fatigue value of the gear. You can see in there are number of bits slightly lesser or uh, below the pit circle radius. This, this portion, this portion, this has a small pits. So, this gear is a spur gear, it is getting number of pits on flank a tooth flank that is surface pitting failure or failure of the gear tooth. So, what, what is the problem in this? I do not find a complete detachment of the gear teeth from uh, surface. It, it is uh, not going to create much problem as such. It is going to give some time to us to replace it and um, problems will occur if performance deteriorates. There is no physical uh, complete damage of the gear but performance deterioration happens when uh, pits are generated. So, we say that surface fatigue it is happening again because of the repeated surface contact stresses. Again the portion will be loaded and unloaded that is why there will be repeated surface contact stresses. What is the surface contact stress we have already described in previous in a basic uh, phenomenal time and uh, we again will try to give a couple of slides on that so that we can uh, estimate the stress. And uh, when we say that when surface fatigue comes mostly the surface properties are accounted. In those situations uh, material will not show any endurance limit or what we say material is not going to show in uh, infinite life or it is not going to survive forever the depth of the material is shown. Uh, with the two major problems uh, related to the pits generation or generation of pit is excessive heat of operation question comes. So, how come the pits are generating excessive heat? They should be acting more like coolant agent, they can store the lubricant and they can reduce the heat generation obviously that dissipate heat much faster. But we know very well whenever there is a pit rolling motion will reduce sliding will increase. Now, we say slide to roll ratio will increase and whenever there is a slide to roll air ratio increase or is a higher sign the frictional heat generation will increase and that may create excess heat. So, we have to see overall thermal equilibrium, but because of the pit generation there will be more and more heat generation. Now, we know there is a no continuous phenomena we are not going to get a continuous contact if there are number of pits of the gears are not going to get a contact constant contact or continuous contact naturally there will be noise generation. The question comes do gears work without any noise? No, gears will always work with a noise it will uh, they will always generate some noise, but the noise may not be noticeable initially 
because environmental noise is much higher than the generation of the noise by the gears. But after generation of pits discontinuity, after, uh, sudden change uh, in um, stiffness that is going to give high noise, loud noise which is a uh, which can be heard easily and we say okay now gearbox is not showing its performance, it is not giving its performance. We need to replace the gearbox. I mean, so we have and we know that there are number of pits generated on the surface generating excess wind noise and we need to replace the gears. Now, when we are discussing about the banding failure and surface failure, I am proud to say that uh, travelogy plays more important role com compared to the mechanical engineering because the banding failure accounts only 10 to 20 percent of overall gear failure while surface stresses, surface fatigue counts almost 80 to 90 percent of failures of the gears. So, travelogy is more important for the gear design compared to the mechanical engineering design. I will say whenever we treat the gear topic we should use knowledge of the travelogy, knowledge of the lubrication, knowledge of the contact surfaces to get proper life, proper uh, performance from the gears. Now, how to uh, evaluate, how to analyze this kind of a surface fatigue failure? You say evaluate the maximum surface contact stress, need to estimate what will be the maximum contact stress, difficult to estimate analytically, but we can do some sort of simplification. Or to do that simplification, we can say simulate the gears by a pair of cylinders of appropriate radius. If we know radius of the cylinder, length is known to us and the two cylinders they are coming into contact, deforming, we can find out what will be the elastic deformation, what will be the contact stresses there. This has been already dealt. You say what we are trying to find is something like this. If this is contact pair and uh, subjected to the load, now we are getting very high stresses here and we need to simulate this. Is this way? Of course, we can do the finite element modeling the way it has been done over here. We can estimate what will be the maximum stress? Well, in this case it has been shown a stress is 2 giga Pascal, very high stress and deformation or local deformation of the surface is roughly 0.6 micron, very low deformation. That is why we require very good surface finish of the gear tooth. And to estimate as they say that easiest way is to simulate with a two cylinders subject to load. We know this are high excess stress or we say high contact stresses. Naturally, there will be some sort of uh, elastic deformation and that elastic deformation is represented with the B. There will be symmetries, overall uh, contact patch will be 2B and it is an elliptical contact. We are assuming there is a uniform distribution of a stress over the length of the cylinder that may load divided by the length is being considered. Always uh, if it is a other than we are talking about that uh, in this case rectangle there will be elliptical maybe the edges can be left when there is no contact. Always if we use a two spheres then the contact patch will be circular while in this case if we are assuming uh, saying that this will be elliptical if we disregard, if we do not count the corners in those situations, then um, we can assume there is a uniform distribution. So, there is a this figure shows the load has been applied on the one cylinder, smaller cylinder, I can assume this as a pinion on, uh, which is resting against a uh, so gear 
larger diameter and uh, contact patch is uh, overall 2B into L will be the I am assuming the rectangle area. One side is a B and this is a pressure generation. So, in that there will be parabolic pressure generation. And pressure will be 0 at the mid of the center or we say about the axis of symmetry pressure will be the maximum that can be given. If we know what is the radius of the pinion, what is the radius of Q. Again, this is these radii are not the same as what we discussed about the pitch circle radius. This radius, these radius are slightly different than pitch circle radius. Reason being, we are talking about the curvature effect of the gear tooth, involute profile of the gear tooth, which they come uh, when they make a contact. A ray will be the different or radius of that particular contact surface will be different. So, let us uh, start with the same uh, relation what we uh, earlier did drive in earlier lectures. We say that P maximum can be given in terms of load, in terms of contact patch, and in terms of length. You say you are we are assuming is a uniform distribution, that is why that we are counting W by L. And this is uh, uh, after integration, uh, we can find out and you say that it is uh, depending on the contact patch. And contact patch can be given after uh, doing the couple of uh, derivations in terms of again W by L, in terms of, uh, terms of geometry, in terms of material parameters. Say these are in Young's modulus E1 and E2. We say E1 is a pinion, E2 is a gear. In the material uh, poison ratio, new one is a gear related, new two is a uh, new one is related to pinion, and new two is related to the gear. D1 is um, we say the context radius, which is different than pitch circle radius, or we say that this is a diameter, so contact diameter contact diameter of the surface 1, surface 2 or pinion and gear and they will be different than per circle diameters. Again in a gear terminology whatever we have done till now, we are using slightly different nomenclature. You are saying instead of using L, we have been using F that is a face width. So, we uh, use that and this is a word uh, diagram also shows where we are not talking about the radial like this, but there is a curvature and there will be some center somewhere here. So, we are talking only about the this radio, we are not talking from the center connecting center to the this uh, radio. We are talking if the you know uh, if I say instantaneous center, so somewhere it will lie over here. So, that that this much distance similarly for other pair this much distance those radius or those radi diameters will be accounted for this expression and that can be given. W can be given if we know the W t or tangential force on the gear tooth and pressure angle. D 1 in this case has been shown as a product of pitch circle diameter into sine of pressure angle and L what we say the length of the cylinder has been uh, nomenclature as F face width of gear tooth. So, we can use this kind of nomenclature to make it the same uh, what we have done in the gears and there should not be any confusions. We can drive and this is the case clearly the D1 and D2 are the curvatures of the profile at the contact point. Okay, so, what is the contact point? Instantaneous radius or instantaneous point of the contact and I can find out what will be the diameter or what will be the radius out there and that can be determined by using pressure angle. And we know very well pressure angle will keep changing, this is a nominal pressure angle and mostly is counted at the pitch circle uh, point, we say that a point where the two circles are contacting. Well, this is going to be changed at the base, this will be 0 and uh, it will slowly increase reach to maximum value where the pitch point occurs or with the contact point occurs. We substitute these values, we say that uh, substitute uh, W t by cos phi in this relation. So, what we get 2 W t divided by cos phi divided by pi into contact patch or half of the contact patch into f, f is uh, replaced uh, here it was L, it has been replaced with f. 
coming to the second uh, expression for the B, B is been given as a 2 W T divided by pi F, F is again in the face width cos phi and this is a material constant, this is the geometric constant and again we are able to see there is a sin phi over here. Now, what is interesting? B in is in the denominator, W is a numerator, L or is a F is in the denominator. Now, B also contains similar kind of uh, entities W T F. So, W T is in the numerator and F is in a denominator. So, when you substitute it, will, what will turn out to be everything will turn out to be in a square root. So, we can square it or we can say P maximum square can be given as a 2 W T divided by pi, this is the face width into sin of pressure angle, cos of pressure angle, geometry related parameters and material related parameters. Now, this P maximum as we are talking about the surfaces, we are not talking about the shear stress below the surface. So, in those situation maximum contact stress happen at the surface and our maximum contact stress uh, if we represent as a sigma c. So, this expression can be represented as a sigma c square is equal to the 2 w t divided by pi f sin of pressure angle cos of pressure angle geometry parameters and uh, this is uh, material parameters. So, we can uh, find out using this expression what will be contact stress, what will be the maximum pressure, uh, what will be the maximum pressure at the contact point that is the contact stress and that is going to give us uh, life of the gear that is uh, going to uh, tell us whether the gear is going to fail or not, whether pits will be generated or not or pits are going to generate after 1000 hours, 2000 hours, 3000 hours or uh, maybe they have a very long life which is uh, beyond the life of machine or beyond the life of the technology that is in the situation. So, uh, we can uh, rearrange for our uh, comfort or we say for our own convenience. So, we are rearranging it in this case we say W t by f and d p. This is uh, three things we are keeping outside the bracket W t f by d p. Now, the in this bracket what we are doing we are trying to keep all the material related parameters. In second bracket we are trying to keep all the geometry related parameters. So, this is the geometry related parameter, this is the material related parameter and we are using Poisson ratio as well as the Young's modulus. In this case we are using pressure angle as well as so we are using the pitch circle diameters. Now, we uh, know this the pitch circle diameters can be given as a number of teeth into module and the module will remain same for gear and pinion. That is right that when we talk about the gear and pinion now uh, with uh, this uh, pitch circle diameter can be represented as a m is a module into uh, zg similarly like this uh, m into zg plus m into zp. So, mm will be uh, common and will be nullified will be cancelled out and this quantity can be represented in terms of number of gears. So, say that is a what is a z p plus z g divided by z g and this is a inverse uh, of this which say i is been represented as sin of pressure angle cos of pressure angle divided by 2 that is a inverse of this and d g uh, is been get replaced with a z g z uh, d p has been replaced with a z p and here d g is been replaced with a z g. So, this is a geometry parameter can be calculated separately. Now, talking about the material parameters, material parameters has been given as a uh, in the function of Poisson ratio and Young's modulus. So, once we uh, have simplified it our overall expression can be simplified. So, what is the, what is the advantage of this? So, when we do the iterations, when we say that ok the different pressure angle was going to happen, this this parameter is not going to change at all ok, phase width is not going to change at all, the W t is not going to change, D p is not going to change. If there is a different point we can change the phi and we try to find out what will be the maximum minimum value for that. Okay. That is the way we can separate, we can do some sort of a parametric study on that or we say if we want to keep a similar kind of pressure angle and we want to keep it as a 
function of dp we can play with that or as a function of phase width again we can uh, find out the results accordingly. So, this kind of a formulation is helping us to estimate stress level for different parameter or with different level of the parameters. So, this is a simplified expression which is the sigma c contact stress or maximum contact stress is given as a cp square root of wt that is the tangential load on the gear surface divided by f divided by i and divided by dp pressure obviously the piece circle diameter of the pinion. So, once we know this we can find out what will be the maximum contact stress. Now, there is a we say that we have drive the equation we found uh, tried to figure out what will be the contact stress what will be the maximum contact stress. But EGMA the American gear manufacturing association is not happy with this equation. So, you know this equation does not involve velocity related parameter lesser velocity or larger velocity relations are the same it does not involve misalignment effect it does not involve kind of the shock loading impact loading. So, that is why they included the three more parameters what is the C A C M C V velocity related this is a phase width related this is the application related naturally these parameters are going to increase the stress level. Coming to the C A the first one we say that we need to find out to C A based on what is the driving uh, machine and what is a driven machine where this pair is going to decide what kind of application we are using. So, that when uh, power source or driving machine is uniform take an, take an example of uh, electric motor then uh, and of course, a machine uh, which is driven is also uh, very simple and uniform one shaft simply rotating then this form or this parameter will be one ideal thing. But if it is subject to do a light shock or heavy shock, this parameter is going to be more than 1 for the light shock, some change in uh, so there is a some sort of discontinuity in the force, discontinuity in transmission, then this will be 1.25 for the light shock, for heavy shock it will be 1.75. Coming to the extreme case, which is a moderate shock, in this case, there may be a take an example of uh, uh, single cylinder engine we know the spark happens once in a cylinder or once in a per cycle and uh, to almost 270 degree there is no not much uh, force not much pressure generation. So, in that case uh, there will be some sort of change in uh, loading and unloading that is going to give a more like impact loading. So, in this situation and uh, if there is a moderate shock and the vehicle is driven on the road we can take this factor as a 2.0 first thing is a single cylinder and then the road uh, we, uh, wheel is moving on the road we know very well the roads will not be perfectly smooth they will not be having complete carpet there will be some way uneven surfaces. So, that is why there will be moderate shock on that and we are taking this factor as a 2.0. So, depends on the situation depends on applications we can choose this parameter it may be lower parameter or more than um, certain value these parameters of course, these are the initial designs so, once we do it finally, we need to do experiments and then that is the situation we can change this parameter as per the real conditions. So, uh, C A can be figured out using this table and this is the initial required from initial design point of view then comes to the C M. C M is um, more like a face width parameter and it gives away that the load is uh, evenly distributed or not we know larger length will not be able to distribute load evenly uniformly there is a possibility of some sort of a, a deviation in linear uh, profile and there will be some sort of misalignment and misalignment that is going to introduce some additional load that is why we never take complete length. If the face width is a 10 mm we will be taking maybe say maximum 62.5 percent of that of say 6.25 mm of that length that is um, uh, with a thumb rule it is not 100 percent correct or not 100 percent scientific, but has been observed whenever we take uh, this um, length uh, is uh, mostly the 
maximum value is uh, roughly 62.5 percent and that is why you say that if the face width is lesser than 50 mm what we take this uh, C R up is 1.6. If I take a reverse of or inverse of the 1.6 it will turn out to be 0 0.625 that is what I was mentioning a 62.5 percent of that. We do not count whole the face width we count only the 62.5 mm of 62.5 percent of that face width. However, this again a discontinued bands, if it, this is a lesser than 50 mm, if it is a length or face width is a more than 50 mm and a lesser than 150 mm, then this factor is slightly more than 1.6, there is a slightly more penalty on this. Of course, a maximum penalty comes on uh, when the face width is a more than 500, and here we are counting only 50 percent of that, we are not counting 100 percent, we are just counting 50 percent of the face width or 50 percent face width has been used as a as we say that um, adjustment factor for misalignment or we say the middle of misalignment there will be excessive loading and excessive loading that is can be accommodated because of the excessive length. We will be counting only 50 percent of that length <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so, in that way we are able to um, account what will be the misalignment. And then comes a uh, dynamic factor, velocity factor. Interestingly, this is a one of the complex factor. It is not as easy as a CA to be figured out, it is not as easy as a CM to be figured out. It depends on number of parameters. Say that there are two constants, so the two variables, there are one is A and other is B, apart from the velocity. Here the V is a velocity. So, V is a velocity can be accounted or the C V factor can be accounted based on that, but <coughs> or in other word if a V is 0 this factor will turn out to be 1. If V is a higher naturally this factor will be more than 1 and this is also depending on the other B and there is a also the A and B are not uh, independent they are dependent on each other. So, the A is a function of B right. So, it is important when the b is equal to 1 then uh, we say b is equal to 1 this will turn out to be same here it will be the 50 by 50 the whole velocity parameter will be accounted or a and b will not be accounted in that time because of the value of uh, b. However, b can be represented in terms of the quality parameter. So, it is slightly complex it is not as a straightforward as c a and c m. C V depends on A and B, A depends on the B and B depends on the Q V that is a quality parameter and this quality parameter depends on the surface roughness of the gear. So, indirectly what we are doing we are trying to involve a film thickness parameter in this, we are trying to involve what will be the EHL uh, conditions. We know very well that if the surface roughness is higher then the uh, film thickness will not be able to sustain there will be a uh, bonded lubrication or lower end of the mixed lubrication and that is uh, not going to give a very uh, good coefficient of friction it will be having high coefficient of friction it is not going to give uh, good results to us and that been indirectly penalized by using the Q, uh, QV factor. And Q V uh, uh, is given as that if we know the quality uh, of the gear and generally we give a quality from 1 to 12, we say cast iron may have a quality of 5 and 6. When we talk about the automobile engineering or the automobile uh, uh, vehicles, generally we keep this Q V higher factor. That Q V is a 9 um, for ordinary gears you use in uh, maybe say motorbikes and uh, cars, but on higher end if you want more and more smooth flow, we want noise free car does not make much noise because of the gearbox, we need to go for high quality. The high quality uh, is difficult to achieve, it requires extra manufacturing process. So, that this overall gear will turn out to be costlier, um, but this can be quantified based on the tolerance levels. So, that for gear quality of 12 uh, equal to 12, this tolerance range is a 5 micron that means deviation can be maximum 5 micron. Well, the quality uh, 9 the deviation is a 3 times higher that is a 15 micron. So, surfaces can deviate up to 15 micron there will not be much problem. 
or uh, it's a permissible in quality. Actually, we go for the lesser number of uh, lesser number of the quality parameter. This uh, deviation will increase. We will be having more flexibility in tolerance, lesser manufacturing problems, but running time it is not going to generate a dynamic load. I mean, know very well when we use this parameter, there will be variation in the factor. So that is going uh, here. So when the quality is a 12, uh, assuming that the maximum the best quality and the deviation is only 5 micron, in this situation um, uh, this will turn out to be 1 because Q V is 1. Uh, so Q V is 1 when you substitute here, sorry Q V is a 12, uh, when you substitute over here what is happening 12 minus 12 is 0, so B will turn out to be 0. B is 0 in this case, A is 50 plus 56 constant. 56 divided by 56 in this case and here it is um, 0 value. So, whatever the in bracket does not matter much to us because the power is 0 and power is 0 it will be always fun. Now, here may be the 500, 10,000 uh, or 10,000 or 100,000 velocity what do the velocity that is not going to affect the result. So, it is not going to change this CV parameter. So, based on um, uh, input parameters we can find out the CV we can find out Q uh, uh, C A factor that is um, increase of the penalty factor and C M factor. To how to utilize this let us take an example. Say a gear pair we know very well gears are always operated in as a pair single gear does not have any meaning it cannot be used it cannot transmit it, it, it requires other component in a pair. So, it is a gear assembly which always comes, it is a not a single um, gear. So, this gear pair has a pinion and gear and number of teeth is only differed by one. This is another important thing, we do not generally keep the same number of teeth on gears. Even though we require same velocity ratio, we never use. Reason being, same point will keep coming in a contact. And to life of those gears will be lesser than if I keep one more of all this. If one more then the same point will not come in contact, different different points will be coming in a contact and there will be different pattern and we say that uh, more gradual uh, wear compared to the same number of teeth gear. Here pressure angle or the nominal pressure angle is given as a 20 degree. Module, standard module has been defined as a 1.75 face width as a 10 mm. It is uh, required to transmit 8 Newton torque from a crankshaft. A rotational speed is given and of course, a crankshaft of a single cylindrized engine. So, here it is clearly indicated this is a driven machine or driving machine sorry. Driving machine is uh, uh, shock with a shock obviously, the, the only the one uh, stroke or the measure few degree spark will be generated and maximum load will come at that time. Remaining uh, 3 cycles in load will not be that dominating now we say there will be huge fluctuation in uh, power generation. Even though we will be use a flywheel and other parameter, but still the fluctuation will be on the higher side. That is why we need to account high impact loading in this case and uh, factor C A will be you know uh, treated as a moderate factor, moderate level factor, a moderate shock factor in this case and it is subject to the it is uh, uh, engine is connected to the we say this gearbox of gear pair is connecting engine to the wheels. Again the wheels will be also experiencing um, some sort of unevenness on the surface that is uh, going to cause a moderate shock or say the moderate to moderate shock this will give us a C A equal to 2.0 at the initial level. When we do real experiments we can change this value for the first iteration we will take this C A as a 2.0. Here again the bow diameter of the pinion is, is given as 17 mm, bow diameter of the gear is given as a 20 mm. The, these parameters have been given to us but may not be useful directly from our point yeah. But when you are trying to find out the banding value these parameters are required to find out what will be the rim factor. Now, we are saying that use AGMA pitting resistance formula that means, we cannot use a simple uh, contact based formula AGMA has a given modification factor along with the uh, basic uh, contact equation. So, those factors need to be accounted that means, C A need to be accounted, C M need to be accounted, C V need to be accounted. 
determine the maximum contact stress. We are trying to figure out what will be the maximum contact stress and if possible check it whether it will survive uh, this kind of gear profile will survive or not or if it is possible you estimate the life of the gear. Now there are some assumption given to us where you say assume gear's quality is equal to 9, quality level is 9, Young's modulus is a 200 gigapascal or 2.2 into 10 to 5 megapascal, poison ratio is a 0.3. So, all this material parameter have been defined. If we know the quality factor, we will be able to find out what will be the CV. We have a phase width known to us, based on this we will be able to find out what will be Cm. Use those formulas or we say agma pitting resistance equation, sigma C can be represented as material parameter, applied load, phase width, geometry parameter, width circle diameter or pinion, application factor, phase width factor and velocity factor. Now, W2 can be figured out because in this case a transmission is being given as a uh, torque is being given as a 8 Newton meter and we know what is a piss circle diameter. We can use a piss circle radius 8 divided by piss circle radius that is going to give us a WT and WT is required over here. Now, face width is already given as a 10 mm. We have already penalized this face width by using the CM factor that is a 1.6. Uh, we are saying that we are taking effective face width as a F divided by 1.6. Now, CV can be calculated using the quality factor. We say the 9 is a quality factor, the substitute value in the B. B will turn out to be giving some value and uh, finally A and then based on the C way and this has uh, 15 micron. The, this uh, requires a velocity also because we found the uh, um, C V depends on uh, velocity also. So, velocity can be calculated as a pi d n and has been defined at the 8000 rpm and uh, pi we know this is a 3.14 into dp, dp can be figured out the 1.75 into 23 that is going to give us a dp. So, once we know dp, we can find out the pi dn as a velocity, once we know velocity, we know a and b factor substitute those value, the c v turn out to be 1.34. I am not repeating those calculation because all this calculation been done in previous slides. We know the quality substitute there will be 12 minus 9, so 3 some power that is uh, going to give us a B value, phase 1 B we will be able to figure out A, based on A we will be able to figure out C V. This is the same calculation has been done in previous slide, which was uh, shown somewhere here. So, quality 9 and uh, B is here, when you substitute this 9, this 12 minus 9, the 3 power is 2 by 3, multiply 2.5. You see, you find out the B, substitute in A, we will be able to figure out A substituted this A in this uh, equation, velocity pi d and uh, we mentioned how to calculate for our application is turning out to be 16.86. So, use this parameter we will be able to figure out C V. So, that is uh, what uh, mentioned the C V is known to me or uh, C A we will figure out, C M uh, we know that less than 50 m mm m is a constant of 1.6. So, use this value. Now, coming to the material parameter. Here Young's modulus is given and interestingly Young's modulus for pinion and Young's modulus for gear are the same, they are not changing, they remain same and uh, again the poison ratio for pinion and poison ratio for gear is the same. So, I do not have to calculate this bracket separately and this bracket separately, I can say that okay, this is the same, so I can multiply the 2 pi into 1 minus nu square divided by E. So, this uh, parameter can be calculated substituting value and after finding this we are getting the C p is equal to 187. Coming to the geometry factor, pressure angle is known to us that is the 20 degree substitute over here sin phi, sin of 20 degree cos of 20 uh, degree divided by 2. Number of teeth are known to us that is the 24 here, pinion is also known to us that is 24 divided by 47. We will substitute all this value what we are getting I is equal to 0 0.0821. So, I know I, I know C p, I know C a, I know C m, I know C v. We also know what will be the W t that can be simply figured out 8 divided by uh, piss rate radius 
f is known to us dp uh, can be calculated based on that we can find out sigma c contact stress maximum contact stress and that is turning out to be 1334 megapascal or say 1.33 gigapascal stress level is very high. As per the question we have determined maximum contact stress. Now, point comes will this contact stress create generate bits on the surface? If yes, how to estimate how to gauge that? So, for that purpose we required some uh, material data. There will be number of material data just for the completion I am showing only one chart and uh, this chart says allowable contact stress. And here on x axis it is being given the Brinell hardness and this figure is for through hardened steel. It is not for the case hardened steel, it is for the through hardened steel and hardness has been given as a Brinell hardness, Brinell hardness number. Again we have a 2 grades of material, grade 2 material is better than grade 1 material, have a more uh, precision uh, compared to grade 1 material or uh, based on this we can figure out whether the material is going to survive or not, obviously gear tooth is going to survive or not. And what is being mentioned as the Brinell hardness is increasing allowable contact stress is increasing that is we know very well as the hardness increases there are more and more compressive resistance uh, on the surface and then we will be able to give high or uh, will be able to sustain high contact stresses and that is been shown out here. But what is the interesting thing? What we got the 1334 megapascal and this figure, this table or the this graph shows a maximum value as only 1300 megapascal. That means I cannot use grade 2 material or grade 1 material for our application, whatever we have discussed. So, what is the possibility how to think over how to utilize this kind of table. We require some additional thing we say this allowable contact stress is for 10 million cycles, 10 million load cycles with the reliability parameter of 0.99. If we do not require that high reliability, so we require 85 percent reliability, we require 80 percent reliability. That means, I can utilize this table for our purpose. In other words, when I talk about the reliability and the shear factor related to the reliability for 0.99, this factor is 1.0. Now, if reliability increases, this factor will increase or we say the effective stresses are going to increase, right. When uh, further reliability increase, this is a 99.99 percent, this factor is 1.5, but if I want only 90 percent reliability, this factor is a lower. Or we say with uh, when we are talking about lesser reliability, this material may survive. So, let us take it. We say uh, here at uh, What is the maximum value of the it can sustain it is a something like 1175 mega Pascal maximum value we are treating with the maximum value of this grade material which happens around 400 Brunel hardness 400 uh, HP that is uh, giving the results of 1175 mega Pascal. Now, how to uh, 1175 mega Pascal and we are talking about the reliability that is 0.85 that is showing other results other 1384. Okay. So, this is going to say give us actual strength of 1384 when we compare directly with this. Ah, in other words, we can directly multiply 1334 into 0 0.85 and find out how much stress will be generated when we are talking about the reliability. However, when we talk about the allowable stress generally we divide, we do not multiply over here, but we can do answers will not differ, answer will remain same. So, in this case we say that 1384 it can uh, survive 
if the reliability is only 85 percent and what we have generated is stress is only 13 under 34 which is on a safer side which is a lesser than 13 which is a lesser than 1384. So, we can see this gear is going to survive with 85 percent reliability, but if we talk about the 90 percent uh, more than 90 percent reliability this gear may not survive and we need to go for high hardness. We know when you talk about the true hardness maximum achievable hardness is roughly 400 bh and that is why that has been stopped over here. Beyond that hardness we generally require case hardening process. It may be nitriding, may be uh, carburization or a mixture of these two. We need to do a surface treatment and in those situations what we are going to get? We are going to get higher hardness, but for the few micron thick layer obviously the few maybe some uh, lesser than uh, 1 mm thick layer. After that the, the hardness will continuously change and we to analyze that we need to go at a slightly sophisticated analysis which is uh, beyond the purview of this course. So, we will be uh, talking about this once we know what is um, maximum is stress which will be generated we can find out what will be the reliability for the definite life which we are estimating. And of course, in this case we are mentioning is a 10 million cycle life. Now, if we want a more life or we want lesser life, we can see this kind of a table. What to say that is the life factor. If you want the lesser uh, life from the gear, this factor is going to be more than 1. That means, this is uh, going to give us uh, more permission for the high stress. And uh, here it is given as a some value into n is a number of cycles power something. That is a negative as a number uh, cycles are increasing naturally this Zn factor will continuously decrease. Now, here it is uh, coming some sort of uh, uh, merger or point 10 to 7 cycles the 10 million cycles what we said and beyond that this zone completely depends on the kind of uh, environment which we are giving what we say the lubrication regime fairly uh, smoothness of operation we say that what are the roughness is the laser and material parameters on residual stresses. Here we will not be able to discuss about this which are more mechanical parameter, but we can think about the lubrication regimes. You can see we what how we can provide a better lubrication regime, so that we can uh, experience or we can uh, see the higher gear life or uh, high survivability without generation of nipid. And whatever we have done uh, stress level it is uh, going to give an intimation generation of first pit it is not going to give an uh, intimation of series of the pits. Okay. Once the one pit is generated it is going to lead a generation of number of other pits obviously uh, accelerated the pit generation, but the first pit generation we can estimate using our formula which has been described in the present lecture. Now, if we find um, um, value of uh, ZL uh, for uh, some cycles, if it turning out to be more than 1 or lesser than 1 directly from uh, this, we can find out what will be the life of the component okay. and that is a modification factor generally suggested by the uh, AGMA. We can utilize this rotational speed and we can figure out what will be the life of the component. However, we were discussing of the lubrication regimes whether boundary lubrication or mixed lubrication or elastro atom lubrication. So, there are some guidelines how to choose what kind of velocity or viscosity should be selected for appropriate life of the gears. So, we will see here we generally go ahead with the um, gear submerged in um, oil common example is IC engine or uh, where the gears are generally submerged in the um, crankcase where the some lubricant is provided. And we say that this kind of the splash lubrication is provide, uh, permitted for the power uh, lesser than uh, 100 kilowatt that is a substantially high power 100 kilowatts and pitch velocity also on the lesser side the 10 millisecond milli meter per seconds. So, when we have uh, this kind of condition we can think about the splash, uh, splash lubrication what is the splash lubrication? We say that gears are kept in some uh, oil and because of the rotation the gear this um, because of the rotation there will be splashing action and that will be able to give us generation or uh, provide appropriate lubrication. And uh, what should be the volume uh, of the 
oil which we are going to utilize here and what should be the depth of the container in which uh, we are using the oil. Obviously, that if a container is a square container or is a box shaped container, what there is a some depth of this depth is important for us and then um, depth uh, uh, volume is important overall. So, depth in which the gears are immersed obviously, that from top surface of the gear to the sum surface can be figured out uh, that h can be determined using this relation we say 1 to 6 modules in mm. So, if the module uh, is around 4 mm, so we can see 1 to 6, so if we take mean value initially, so 3 into m that means 12 mm, 12 mm on the gear, one gear at least should be tipped in oil and we should provide uh, this much volume, so that uh, sufficient oil is there, there is no generate, uh, no air contained in that or um, splash lubrication is happening properly. However, if the power rating is increasing, we will be requiring more and more um, faster cooling purpose uh, oil with uh, some velocity and that comes with the pressurized lubrication for the large gears something like this. Say that depends on uh, this kind of rating dep and uh, depending on the piston line velocity, we can choose appropriate uh, viscosity of uh, oil. Interesting thing is for low velocity, we are choosing a thicker lubricating oil. For high velocity, we are choosing a thinner lubricating oil. Compare here, when the piston line velocity is at 25 meter per second, we are choosing this viscosity uh, in centric stroke from 40 to 65, while uh, pitch line velocity is very low is a 1 meter per second, we are choosing very thick coil that is a 180 centi stroke to 300 centi stroke. So, depends on the pitch line velocity, depends on the power rating, we should choose the lubricating, uh, lubricating media as well as a lubricant properly and if we select this, there will be appropriate life of the gears been recommended again as we are mentioning here, gear topic itself is a very sophisticated topic, it requires a lot of calculations, lot of iterations. However, the whatever have been presented in uh, present course, they are good or uh, from understanding point of view and uh, from initial design point of view. We cannot optimize these gears based on the knowledge we are given in the present lecture, but when we talk about the optimization we should refer for the detailed analysis, detailed finite element modeling of the gears. With this, uh, I am trying to close the topic on the gears, we will be discussing in the next lecture or uh, we will start the uh, ne uh, next lecture with the topic a journal bearing, which is uh, one of the common uh, fluid film bearings. Fluid film bearing may be based on a squeezing action, is may be based on a hydrostatic action, may be based on a hydrodynamic action. We will try to cover those topics. From uh, next lecture, we have remaining four more lectures on this course uh, on the travelogy. We'll be discussing in next lecture. Thank you.